Let me get Facebook together. Okay. Well, good morning, Lakira. <clears throat> we almost Ready? there. Okay. We almost there. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all not waiting on me, right? No, no, no. We, I'm waiting. We waiting on Facebook to get us all together. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, we ready. Let's get, let's have at it. Okay. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could he. All our souls diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the Lord. Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed, but reject profane and old wise fables, and exercise yourself toward godliness. Oh. The body exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. And I have read First Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and of his word and an expectation of our soul. Shall we pray? Yes. Most gracious, turn Father God. We thank you, dear Lord, for this another Sunday and another day. Thank you, dear Lord, for watching over us last night while we slept and woke up this morning to see a brand new day, a day that was a promise to us, our Father. But you made it somehow for us, our Father. That we just want to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for our health and strength. And most of all, gave us a mind to get up with our Father just to praise your name once again. Dear Lord, we ask that Father upon those who are sick and shut in at this time. We ask to heal them in the most mindful way, our Father, to our will. And dear Lord, with the times of the bereaved, all those Father here as well, Father. We ask to strengthen those families at this time that they're going through, our Father. Dear Lord, strengthen this city, this country, this whole United States, our Father, still going with this COVID-19, our Father. Right? A lot of us, our Father, just, just being you know, obedient and not doing what we're supposed to be doing down here, our Father. But dear Lord, you know all about that, Father. And I ask you, our Father, that some way, somehow, that we can come to grip with this thing, our Father, that everybody will be on one accord, our Father, that we all must do what's, what's going on down here, that we can just be the people that you want us to be at this time, our Father. Those our Father want to be negative on them, they stay where they at, our Father. But I serve a God that looks high and looks low and all Father, our circumstances at this time. And I'm asking thee, dear Lord, just to look on us today, our Father, this is our will. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings in thy son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, to do praise the last. Amen. 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 Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant 
with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion <clears throat> and secret devotions to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our sex in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our savior, to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To tell you once again, today's message is, is there an app for that? Before I do that, I just want to go to the throne of grace, do our altar prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, it's once again that we assemble ourselves out to the house of worship. No, it's not a traditional house or a place of uh, brick and mortar, but we are gathered together through technology. And Lord, we thank you for bringing forth technology yes, so Lord. that when the church buildings was no longer operable, we still can come and worship you. And we can gather around your throne of grace. And first of all, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Yes. We thank you for your loving kindness that you alone and you alone will see us through. Then Father, I ask that you touch the hearts and minds of men everywhere, that they may turn back to you and say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Father, I ask you to touch the sick and shut in everywhere, whoever they are and whatever their condition may be or is, because you are the healer. You are the bomb in Gilead. Yes. And Father, you still heal it. Yes. And Father, we just thank you for being who you are. Yes. And Father, I ask that you touch the bereaved families yes. or the families and all the ones who are suffering from anxiety and worration for whatever reason there may be, Father, because you are our comforter and you are still with us. And you said, and as you said in your word, and you asked us to cast all our cares upon you that you will take care of. We know that you can. And Father, we believe that you will. But when we bring our problem to you, Father, give us the strength and the faith in our prayers to just leave them with you and not return with them. And Father, we just thank you for today's message and today's gathering. And Father, I ask you to just speak through me as I bring what you have asked me to share, to know that there's one app that we need, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. Thank you in advance for answering this prayer as I pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Is there an app for that? Uh, yeah. My scripture text is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. And it reads as follows. Hey. Everyone that has thirst, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat, yea, that which is good, 
and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Living in a world that we are saturated by technology, we see that we have an app for everything we desire. Yes. And as I was reflecting on the many apps, and I'll tell you what brought me to this lesson, this topic, it was a week ago. I watching TV, one of the few times that I watch regular TV because it's, it's so much negativity, I don't need that fed, fed into my spirit. Oh, and they was talking about there was an app for your mental illness. Well, well. And I come to this, it just hit me. And it says, why not Jesus? Why not try Jesus? Yeah. When then we, I, it, it, it's, 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 it's so profound that we have an app for just everything we looking for, or we might yeah. have a design. And it goes back to our scripture text. It says, you take and you buy, you spend your money on stuff that is not bread. And the bread here is the word of God. All right. And you're working and scrambling, trying to get all these material things that does not satisfy you. Mm -hmm. You try everything but Jesus. Well, right. there is no replacing God in our lives. We see society is running amok mm. with these, all this technology. And I, I was introduced a few a couple of months ago or uh, told about a new app that I had no idea, idea what it was. It's called WhatsApp. And I didn't know what it was. Some mm. of our listeners from over in Pakistan and Afghanistan, they wanted me to get this new app so they could be able to listen and teach their uh, congregation. I didn't know anything about it. And me being human, I rebuffed it, I didn't. And I kept starting to research and look at it. And I was praying, like, what is this? Is this legit? Are they the legit? I was just really listening. And I come to find out that it is tied into Facebook and it is integrated into GoDaddy. And it's another app where you can watch uh, and communicate. But back to my point. There's an app for everything. Well, all right. Some is good. Some is not good. But when it comes down to the fact we want to take apps to replace God and his word, it's going to be fruitless. Well, why do I say that? Because there is no replacement for God and the truth of his word. I don't care how many apps do we get or try and find or use, there is just no replacement. All right. And when we put on God or put him in our hearts, we're going to find rest. We're going to find comfort. Yeah. We're going to find peace. Mm -hmm. He will clear our minds of all of the negativities that's going through it and is taking control of our mind or getting us causing our focus to shift from him and to this otherness. So I, I thought maybe I said, well, let me just kind of look at to some of these apps that man has created and out there. 
Okay. And I'm not knocking the apps, but all I'm saying is there's the one app that we need to put and use every day. All right. Okay. Then we won't need these mental health apps, but let me just go through. There's an app for our anxiety. Man has it. But my answer to that was try Jesus. Well, there's a dating app. Using this app, we're taking the human interaction out of the picture. Well, God created us to be in fellowship with him and with one another. This app, this dating app, cannot replace God's design human feelings and interactions. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many dating apps there is out there on the internet, and there is a ton of them, so I'm told, but they will not, and they cannot replace that human interaction. There is an app for gambling addiction. Hmm. My question, why not trust God to supply all of our needs as he said he would. And if he were to do that, we would not become victims to Satan lies of chancery. And there would be no need to cure a problem that could have been avoided in the first place. Well, when we can put our trust in God, knowing that he's true to his promises of supplying all that we need according to his riches and glory through his son, Jesus Christ. We don't need to become addicted to gambling when we, cause that's taking a chance. When we can bet on a sure thing, Jesus Christ, to supply all of our needs. There is now the app for the doctor. You just log on, tell him what your symptoms are, problem solved. Again, where is the human interaction between the physician and the patient? Where is that human interaction? Okay. There's even an app to help you lose weight. And I'm saying, Jesus made it plain how we are supposed to do, okay? But yet, man want to just put his word out the way and do it his way. That's why we got so many apps, so many ailments, and so much trouble in the world. Yeah. There's even an app that you can receive COVID-19 notification where you can get the vaccine of what's in your particular area. I'm gonna say it once again, try Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's even an app now, they call it Fitbit, to measure your walking steps that'll tell you what your heart rate is and is your desired number of goals or steps that you're supposed to take every single day to be healthy. And you know I have an app for that. <laughs> now you know I have an app for that <laughs> it says let's take a walk with Jesus well all right. put on his body on start with our prayer walk in the morning start walking through the scriptures in the morning or in the noontime or in the daytime or in during the day just take our steps with Jesus. Am I saying don't go walk physically? No, I'm not. But I'm saying don't depend on the app. Just depend on Jesus Christ and start our right. walk with him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and when we can incorporate God more into our lives, a lot of the problems that we are experiencing will be taken away. And let me keep on walking with these apps here. There's an educational app that teaches about reading, foreign language, sign language, 
That one language we forgot. Jesus. As God said, am I speaking God's language? Mm -hmm. We can and we will when we start walking in the light of Christ. When we open up the one app that we have put away, but it has withstood the time of generations of being buried in rubble, but yet he, he brings it to the surface in his time. What is that app? It's called the Holy Scripture, his Bible. That app does not change. Man don't have to modify that one because God's word is truth and it is everlasting. Let me, I got a couple more apps and then we gonna talk about something else. We gonna talk about how the benefit of using Jesus. There is the weather app that you can download to your phone and you never have to look at the news. You can see where the weather is in, in your area, across the street or around the world. Jesus never changes, unlike the weather. It changes, but it does so at his command. He never changes. Once we put on his faith, his breastplate of righteousness, put on, put on our feet, the gospel of peace. We don't have to worry about the weather. Whatever the weather is, once we have on Jesus, we're covered. There's even man-made navigational apps that we can get on the plane, going from here to London, traveling through the sky, 500 plus miles an hour. But it will tell us, tell the pilot, how far he is from his destination. Same thing with the ship. They have a navigational device. They can tell them, oh, we're at this port, we're at that port, or here we are sitting out in the middle of the sea or the ocean. You know, whatever the winds and the waves is coming, it might reel and it might rock, but so far it has stood there, okay? But the thing I'm saying, Jesus is our rock. He's our comforter in troubled waters. And we have these navigational devices in our car that will tell us how far we are from our desired destination. And if we just press the button, we can even call for help when there's trouble. Is it good? Yes. Christ is better. God is better. Because remember, he will lead us around the troubled waters in our lives. We even, when we, if the, 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 our taxi services have gotten so modern and so sophisticated nowadays that we have what? Uber and Link, and they will call you and tell you what the driver looked like, tell you how far the driver is from picking you up. We are moving farther and farther away from human interact interaction. Why? Because we can do most of our shopping online. We never have to go into the store. I know the pandemic has shut down a lot of things, but we was moving in that direction before the pandemic came. And you, and you, with all of this online shopping, you don't ever have, you don't hardly interact with somebody. You have to go through a series of prompts before you can even get to talk to a human person and talk about seeing them in face to face. That's almost non existent nowadays. When are we going to learn God put us here to interact with Him and one another? We are to reverence God and respect our fellow man. We're just getting too far away from God's design plan. We can do banking without ever going into the side of the bank. 
We are heading headlong at breakneck speed, moving toward the cashless society. We can now pay God his 10% without ever writing the check. And that God knows by handing out some cash to some people. There's so many apps to pay God. There's a cash app, there's a Zelle, there's a Giblify, there's a Square, there's a this and a that, and some I don't even know. So what are you saying, preacher? Well, I'm just saying that in this age of technology, let us be mindful of the many apps that are supposed to enhance our lives. But the question that I need for us to answer and think about, we are removing human interaction when God created us to be in fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one app that I recommend called Jesus. Right. He's the one app that will solve all of our problems. If you have a hearing problem, he will open and unstop your ears. I mean, your spiritual ears. And he's been known to unstop uh, physical ears when he walked the earth. He will open up our blinded eyes and let us know and see spiritually that we need a savior. He have already came to earth. He suffered, bled, and died for our sins. We just need to try Jesus. Well, he's the one app that we, when we have a problem, we can take it to him in confidence knowing that he has the solution to whatever our problem is. Unlike our many technology apps, they have to be updated so much. So every so often. Take this Zoom link that we own today. If we have, I had to update to the latest version of it because the other version was outdated. Well, Jesus is never outdated. His word is never outdated. You don't have to update it. You just have to pick it up and read it. Well, <laughs> it has a solution to all of your problems. And I always tell you, don't use the Bible as a dust collector. Use it as our one go-to manual that will tell us and give us the encouragement and the love that is all from cover to cover. It points to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He paid our sin debt on the cross. He have overcome all of this, the troubles that we are encountering in this world. We just have to give them to him and trust him. And I said, Lord, give me your peace. Give me your comfort because you are the one app that I need that I can use daily, every moment of the day. And whatever is going on around me, I have your peace. I have you at the center of the head of my life. And I don't have to fear nothing. I don't have to, certainly don't have to fear man because all he can do and his best time is to harm this body. But if my life is anchored in you, he cannot touch my soul. Let us reflect for just a moment on Job and in doing all of his trying time. And his three friends came and tried to convince him that he had seen. And he had to tell them that, man, I don't know what you're talking about because I tell you what, I came into this world naked and I'm willing to go out because God, the my redeemer who is alive, has more take my soul back with him. That's what we need to be focused on. My where is my soul is gone, is anchored in Jesus Christ. He will take care of my mental problem. He'll take care of my anxiety. He will take care of my all of my worries. And most of all, when I have some physical needs, he is so true to his promises that he will take care of them too. God did not suffer out there on the cross for us to continue to be worrying and fretting over stuff that we can't solve in the first place. He did it so that we would not have to because of his love. Okay. 
He loved us unconditionally, and he still loves us con unconditionally. And he's going to continue to love us unconditionally. Yes, does he stop loving us when we're using these different apps? No. And when we try and take and put him uh, the apps in front of him, he just stops still and just moves and show us, no, your app is not going to solve your problem. It has. He is our way maker. Whenever, whatever Doc validates that we are going through, one thing we can be assured of, that he will take us through it because he said so. He is our rod and our stay. He'll comfort us as he's leading us through these dark valley days. And before we know it, we'll be back on the mountaintop of joy, with joy in our hearts. Yes, we can't, we're going to go through because some dark valley days, because we are living in a fallen world. But one thing we can be assured of, we are not alone. And when we get so down and we start to looking for God, just look this inside and so you here. Open up our lives and say, Lord, I'm yours. And I'm going to serve you until the day I die. Don't leave me. He have not left. And he will not. And ask him, let me keep walking with you. Because you have borne our grief so that we wouldn't have to. You was bruised for our iniquities, so I wouldn't have to. You was wounded for our transgression, so I wouldn't have to. You gave, you told, so gave, you asked us me to give you my burdens, because they are lighter than what I'm carrying. Lord, here they are. Take them. I can't bear this alone. He says, I'm here. I'm with you. I will carry your burdens. I'll ask this question again. As we are walking through these trying times in life, why not look to Jesus? He's our all in all. He asked us, and I'm repeating, at several occasions, cast all of your cares on me. I got this. And he being a promise keeping God, he would not ask us to do that if he wasn't going to take care of it. But one thing he wants us to do is to have the confidence in him, to trust him in every situation. Because then if there's no trust in God, we have no confidence in God. God has proven himself many, many times to be trustworthy. And whatever he says he will do, he does. And he does it so well. And he does it so timely. Because see, there's no failure in God. Because he is a loving, compassionate, and caring God. We, as humanity, is created in his image and likeness. He put part of himself into us. And he certainly is going to take care of his own. We are his people. Nothing that occurs in this life, on this earth, is too hard for God to bring to a peaceful end. We cannot get too far out of God's reach, where he can reach down with his mighty hand and bring us to safety, because he is our deliverer. He knows the way for each and every one of us to travel. He knows the direct way. 
And if we follow him, we'll be better off. And while we are trying so many apps to help resolve our medical issues, uh, mental issues, or whatever issue it is, all we simply need to do is to come to Jesus just as we are. He didn't ask us to go get cleaned up. You don't even need money to come to him. You don't need to have a social status to come to him. You just come just as you are. If you a ragamuffin, he don't care. He has what it takes to clean us up. He took his blood and washed us whiter than stone. Since no, just come just as you are. We're spending money on stuff trying to replace him, and he cannot do that. It is useless with God. We're eating everything, trying to stay with what the society said we are supposed to be in weight. God don't care if he weighs 600 pounds physically. He wants you to come to him, and he's going to remove that 600 pounds of sin out of your life. The app can't remove it. Just come, just as you are, and commune with him daily through our prayer, our Bible reading, and meditating on the word, and then the dedicating ourselves to live according to his holy word. And when we can recognize so let me just say this. Where our true help from comes from, it's come from the Lord. And when the psalmist said this, Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will lift up my eye unto the hills with cometh my help. We can recognize that when we truly want help, we will humble ourselves and go to God and say, Lord, here I am. Wretched as I may be, and whatever condition I am, Lord, I'm coming to you to take care of my problem because I know you can. And I have the faith in you that you will. Why? Because you have proven yourself. You are a prayer hearing and answering God. You have the perfect solution for whatever my situation is. And I'm coming to you for a resolution because my technological apps may give a solution, but there is only one solution. Okay? Jesus is the one who will Soothe our weary soul. He will comfort our hearts. He will calm our fears of the unknown. We just need to trust him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we, the life that he is given is everlasting life. And he asks us to eat of him and his word, drink of his word. And we will be okay because we are in Christ. But one thing I want to say with this, I'm thankful that God loves his people so much that when he closed the physical structures, church building, he made a highway through technology. So all who really love him can come to him in true worship. We can be down in Yazoo, Mississippi and still come and worship and worship. Uh, and we can be in Afghanistan, we can be in Nairobi, Kenya, but it doesn't stop us from worshiping. See, God is such an all known and loving and way making God. He knew these days was coming long before any of us 
ever existed more than likely. And he opened up technology. So one who really is a true follower of Christ will make their way to somebody's church via technology. See, technology is good, but it does not replace God. That's what I'm saying. We have many of them, but the one I want you to try and put in the forefront of your life is Jesus Christ and his holy word. See, that's a big difference from being a friend of Christ and being a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. And this situation that we are in for the church physical building, brick and mortar is closed, but he opened that door through technology. And all who are true followers of Christ, they make them their way to worship, to come and worship him. And we come and worship him and true and in spirit. And let me just say this, if I can close with this. Take off so many of your man-made apps and put on Jesus app. Right. Those are the churches open. If I can try and sing this song. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, he will save you, he will save you just now. Oh, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Let us close in prayer. Father God, I thank you for the message. I thank you for the word. And I thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, let this word have a resonating and leave a residue on the brain that we need you. Put you first in all that we do. Yes, you have opened up apps for us to use, but Father, nothing replaced you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. God be with you. God with you until we meet. Amen. 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 Amen.